In this video, we're going to talk about a different method for finding the volume of a solid of revolution. It's called the method of cylindrical shells. Sometimes we just say shells and say instead of cylindrical shells. And here's an example why we need a different method. We're trying to find the volume of a solid generated by the region enclosed by the curve y equals x over square root x cubed plus 1, the line x equals 1, and the x-axis. So that is our region. And that region is going to be rotated about the y-axis. So this is a fairly complicated curve. And if I were to give this to you on a quiz or a test, I would provide a graph of the curve for you. So here we have the graph of our curve. It kind of, uh, at least on the if, when x is positive, it reminds us of maybe a square root type function. And we are interested in the region under that curve, bounded by the line x equals 1 and the x-axis. So it's that region right there. And we're going to take that region and we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. So on the, we'll get a, a solid. On the outside, it looks like a, a, just a cylinder. And on the inside, we have uh, carved out some conical-shaped uh, bit uh, to make it a little bit hollow. And it's really the inside which gives us a problem if we were try to use washers with this particular um, solid because we would draw our rectangle parallel, I mean perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And its thickness would be delta y, which would mean that I'd have to write my bounds of integration and my integrand in terms of y. I would have to solve this equation for x. And it may actually be positive, pos possible, excuse me, to do that. It, however, you would get a terribly complicated expression. Uh, and uh, it may even involve uh, imaginary numbers. And even after we found that expression for uh, x in terms of y, um, we might get an, an integral that where we can't find the antiderivative. So we need to look for a different method. And the idea of what we're going to do is instead of slicing, kicking our slices um, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, we're going to take cylinders that get sliced by going parallel to the axis of rotation. And so you can imagine that we're just creating a uh, set of cylinders which are nested within each other and with different heights and, of course, a different radius. But when I put all of those cylinders together, I get something that approximates the solid. And so let's look at how we would find the volume of one of those cylinders. If I know how to find the volume of one of those cylindrical shells, then uh, I can add up the volume of all of the, the cylindrical shells, and that'll give me an estimate for the volume. And then, of course, my next step would be to let the number of cylindrical shells go to infinity, which will result in an integral. So if I so pardon my drawing here. It really should be a much thinner shell here. But imagine that delta x is really very tiny, and in fact so small that it doesn't really matter whether I take r to be the inner radius or the outer radius or some value in between. And then we have a height 
of this cylindrical shell. And the way we're going to calculate or estimate, approximate its volume is to take the surface area of this shell. And if you remember from geometry, that uh, formula is 2 pi r h. And you can, we got that in geometry by saying, if I were to slice this cylinder open and unroll it, I would get a rectangle. And the length of the rectangle would be the same as the radius, I mean, circumference of the circle, so 2 pi r. And the width of the rectangle would just be the height of the cylinder. And so the area is 2 pi r h. Now, if this has some thickness to it, then we'd have to multiply it times thickness to get the volume of just one shell. So then if I added up the volume of say all n shells, I would get an approximation. And then I would let the number of shells n go to infinity, which will result in this following integral. So we have the two pi, and then rh times the thickness. Well, what happened to the thickness? That's what the dx represents. And so then our bounds of integration then would be x bounds. So let's go ahead and uh, find the volume of this particular solid. So our formula is 2 pi integral from a to b rh dx. What is the value of r? Well, if I look at just one of these cylinders, the R value is just the distance from the axis of rotation out to the curve. Well, that is the same as the X coordinate of the point on that curve. So the, the radius is just X. And what about the height? Well, the height is just the Y coordinate of that point. And, uh, but we have to write everything in terms of x, but that's fine. We have a formula for y in terms of x. So our bounds of integration then are going to go from 0 to 1. They have to be x bounds. And in order to find the antiderivative, first let me multiply that out. And then I see that I have under the radical sign x cubed plus 1. Outside the radical, I have x squared. So I should be able to use a u substitution. I'll let u equal everything under the radical. So u equals x cubed plus 1. du is 3x squared dx, which is not exactly what I have outside, but it's only off by a multiplicative constant. So I'll solve for dx here, I get du over 3x squared. And then the next thing I need to do are, is convert the bounds. So when x is 0, u will be 1. And when x is 1, u is going to be 2. So let's go ahead and uh, perform the u substitution. The x squareds will divide out. This 3 in the denominator, I'm going to pull that out in front of the integral, so I'll get 2 thirds pi. And then I'll rewrite the 1 over radical u as u raised to the power of negative 1 half. So the 3 came out in front in the denominator. Uh, the x squared divided out, and 1 over radical u is the same as u raised to the power of negative one half. So I'll use the power rule to find the antiderivative. Let's do that carefully. Add one, I'll get one half. 
The reciprocal of one half is two, so I need to multiply by two and evaluate that between u equals two and u equals one. So I'll bring this two out in front with the two pi over three. That'll give me a four pi over three. And then uh, u to the one half is the same as radical u. So I get the four pi over three. When I put in two, I'll get radical two. Subtract off the value when I put in one in place of u, and radical one is just one. So our method is, has a lot of similarities, but uh, important differences with the method of washers. We still have to sketch the region, and we want to shade that region and the axis of rotation. Um, here's the first big difference. When we draw our rectangle, if we're using the method of cylindrical shells, when we draw our rectangle in the region, it's going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. So it should be parallel. Let me see if I can... There we go. And then we have to write down its width because that width is going to tell us our variable of integration. Is it a dy or a dx integral? It's going to tell us that in this case, if it's a dx integral, all the integrand has to be written in terms of x and the bounds will have to be in terms of x. So uh, our next step uh, is to find expressions for the radius and the height and the bounds of integration. So um, all of in terms of our variable of integration. And then the other big difference is that uh, our formula is different. So we have the r and the h and we have a two pi out in front. So two pi r h uh, is what we have to remember when using cylindrical shells. So let's look at another example. We're going to find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the region enclosed by y equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6 and y equals 0. Remember y equals 0 is just the x-axis. And we're going to rotate that about the y-axis. So this is just a parabola. And in this case, uh, I would expect you to know how to sketch the graph of this parabola. So let's take a few minutes to just review how we would do that. We would start by finding the vertex. And from algebra, we have the formula that x is going to be negative b over 2a. Or we could use calculus and just find the, the coordinates of the maximum value of this parabola it's going to give us the same answer. So I'm going to stick with the familiar formula for, our, for the vertex from algebra. Remember a, b, and c. a is the coefficient on the x squared term. b is the coefficient on the x term. c is our constant. So if I substitute those values in, um, negative b, so that'll be a negative 8 over 2 times negative 2, and that'll be negative 8 over negative 4, which makes positive 2. Of course, the, that doesn't help me unless I know the y-coordinate, but I can just use the equation here for y. I'll replace x with 2, so 2 squared is 4, so I got negative 2 times 4 plus 8 times 2, so it's negative 8 plus 16. That gives me 8. 8 minus 6 gives me 2. So the coordinates of the vertex are 2, comma, 2. Um, what else would be useful? It would be useful to find the x-intercepts, in particular if they're nice integers. So I will replace y with a 0, and I'll solve for x. I could use the quadratic formula, but 
In this case, I can just factor it. Factor out first the negative 2, and then factor x squared minus 4x plus 3. That factors as x minus 3 and x minus 1, which means that this will be 0 when x equals 3 or x equals 1. So my intercepts, which are points, are 3 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. And what else do I know? I know from the fact that uh, I have a negative value for a that I should have a parabola that opens downward. So let's put all that information together and we get the following graph. And so that is the, the graph, the region that we want is the region under the parabola above the x-axis. It's going to be rotated about the y-axis. And so uh, when I draw my rectangle parallel to the y-axis, I see the thickness is delta x. So I need to have all of my integral in terms of x. The bounds have to be in terms of x. Well, we can see from the region that the bounds have to go from 1 to 3. The smallest x value in that region is 1. The largest x value is 3. So those are my bounds. And then I'm going to have to find both r and h in terms of uh, x. Well, if I sketch what this looks like, here's a representative cylinder. The radius value is just the distance from the y-axis out to the point on the curve. That's the same as the x-coordinate of that point. So that is just x. And then for the height, well, the height is just the y-coordinate. And I have a formula for y in terms of x. So I'll need to use that formula in terms of x. So I have both r and h in terms of x. I said the bounds go from 1 to 3. So I should be able to substitute everything in our formula, the 2 pi definite integral from a to b, rh dx. And we got the dx because of the delta x in our original rectangle. So uh, that'll just give me this following integral. And I can evaluate that by first uh, multiplying it out. Then I'll need to use the power rule for each one of those terms in the polynomial. And then evaluate that from 1 to 3. And so just looking at this carefully, uh, I have negative 1 half. 3 to the power of 4 is the same as 9 times 9, which is 81. So I have negative 81 over 2. Uh, 3 cubed is 27. Divide that by 3, I'll get 9. 9 times 8 is 72. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Uh, substituting 1 for x is uh, simpler. I'll just get the coefficients. So negative 1 half plus 8, three, eight thirds minus 3. Now let's see if I can do the arithmetic correctly. I have a negative 81 over 2 minus a negative 1 half. That's the same as plus 1 half. So negative 81 plus 1 will give me negative 80. Negative 80 over 2 is negative 40. Uh, 72 minus 27 is 45. Uh, that still leaves me with a minus 8 thirds. And then minus a minus 3 would be a plus 3. So if I put all those whole numbers together, I'll get 8. So if I write 8 with a denominator of 3, I'll have uh, 24 over 3. Minus 8 over 3, that'll be give me 16 over 3. Inside the brackets, still have to multiply times 2 pi outside the brackets. And so my final result is 32 pi over 3 
cubic units for the volume. Let's look at another example where we're not going to rotate about the x-axis or the y-axis. We're going to rotate about the line x equals 1. Now the parabola is simpler. It's just y equals 1 minus x squared. And again, we're going to look at the, uh, the region between that y equals 1 minus x squared and the x-axis. Now, when the axis of rotation is not the x-axis nor the y-axis, we need to be uh, thinking carefully about how we're going to find our expressions for y and or h. So let's look, not for y, for r and or h. So let's look at this diagram and let's find a couple values of r uh, by just taking some sample values for x. And so if I started out by, now let me, let's do this one step at a time. If I start out by taking x equals one half, then the radius, so I go up to the curve, the radius from the line x equals one, is just the distance from there to that point, and that's going to be one half. Now, how would I get that in general? Well, it looks like I would have to take one and subtract off the x coordinate. Now, is that going to work if I take a negative value for x, if I'm on this other part of the parabola, you might ask yourself, do I need to take two different integrals? Well, let's just look. If I take r equals, I mean, x equals negative one half. Well, when x equals negative one half, my value for r is going to be, and it'll have to go one in order to get to the y-axis. And then I'll have to go another one half. So the total value for r is three halves. But if I break down three halves, really, again, it's that distance to the y-axis. And then I'm adding one half. Well, wait a minute. Adding one half is the same as subtracting negative one half. Why would I want to write it that way? because my x value is negative one half. And so in general, even when I'm on the far curve of this parabola, the formula for r is one minus x. So it looks like I don't need two different integrals. I can use only one integral with the same expression for r in each case being one minus x. Now the h value in this case uh, is more straightforward. The h value, the height of this cylinder, is just the y-coordinate uh, of the point there. And uh, we have a formula for y in terms of x. So we'll be using the 1 minus x squared in our formula. So let's go ahead and make the substitution. We have 1 minus x is r, and 1 minus x squared for h. And our bounds of integration go from negative 1 to positive 1. Those are our x values from that shaded region. So go ahead and multiply that out. And now let's notice two things, that my bounds are opposites of each other. And inside, I have two terms. Inside the integrand, I have two terms which have odd powers of x. So x is the same as x to the power of 1. x cubed, that's an odd power. And then I also have two terms 
with even powers of x, or at least our even functions, right? All constants are an even function, and obviously x squared is an even function. So I should be able to take advantage of symmetry here. So by symmetry, and let's be uh, careful here and remember that if I take the integral from negative 1 to 1 and I have odd, an odd integrand, that's just going to evaluate to 0. And if I have opposites for my bounds of integration, and I have an even function as my integrand, I don't get zero, but I can use symmetry and change the bounds to be start at zero, and then just remember to multiply by 2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get uh, the 2 will multiply times the 2 pi out here. And so then I'll get 4 pi, and I only have the even terms left over. So that simplifies the evaluation significantly. So just use the power rule to find the antiderivative and I have a very simple evaluation from 0 to 1. And so when I put in 1, I'll have 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. And multiply that times 4 pi, I'll get 8 pi over 3. All right, so here we're going to take uh, not the whole circle, but just a portion of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 which is in the first quadrant, and we're going to rotate it about a horizontal line, y equals negative 1. So we're only taking this portion of the circle. I only do the semicircle so that, to make it a little bit simpler. But we're only taking the portion which is in the first quadrant, and our axis of rotation is going to be this horizontal line, y equals negative 1. So let's draw a rectangle. And this tells me that, oh, the thickness of the rectangle is delta y. So I'm going to have a dy integral. So I'll need to have my bounds in terms of y. And then I would also need to have the integrand written as an expression of y. So um, the bounds are pretty easy. Uh, the for y, it starts at 0, and the highest value is 2. So the largest value for y is 2. So let's think about the, the radius and the height then. How would that work out? Well, the radius is going to go from the axis of rotation to some point on the curve, and that's going to have two parts. There's always going to be a value of 1 there, and then we're going to have to add onto that the y coordinate. And so we want everything in terms of y. So I'll just leave y as y. So my radius then is 1 plus y. The height of the cylinder is just going to be the x coordinate of that point. But I'll need to solve that. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals 4. I'll need to solve that for x. And I get uh, radical 4 minus y squared. Uh, I have to solve it for x because I have to use the expression which has is written in terms of y. So let's go ahead and put those in our formula. All right, so oh, I'm sorry. Here's, the, here's our diagram with our, the cylinder with the r value and the h value. But the diagram got really messy, so that's why I just went back to looking at it without the cylinder drawn. So we've got our formula. Let's go ahead and put in our r value and our h value. And 
when I look at this, it looks uh, very complicated in terms of trying to evaluate this. Um, but if I break it into two integrals, if I distribute the radical inside the parentheses, I'll get one times the radical. So I just have the integral two pi, integral from zero to two radical four minus y squared dy. And then I have a second integral when I multiply the radical times the y inside the parentheses. Uh, my integrand there is just y radical four minus y squared. So the first integral, again, if we're only thinking mechanically about u substitutions or simple antiderivatives, we might get confused. But if we remember our properties of the definite integral, in particular, if we remember that we can interpret it as an area, then this integrand represents the area of a quarter circle. Radical four minus y squared is a semicircle, but we're only looking at the y values from zero to two. So all that is, is the area of our shaded quarter circle. So it's a quarter circle and the radius is two. We'll just use geometry to evaluate that integral. The second integral, we can't use geometry, but we can make a u substitution. We'll let u equal everything under the radical. So du is negative 2y dy, and I can solve that for dy being du over negative 2y. So, oh, I need to do the bounds, so let me not forget those. So when y equals 0, u is going to equal 4, and when y equals 2, u is going to be 0. So for the first integral, I just used pi r squared times 1 fourth. And for the second integral, I'm going to complete my u substitution here. And so I will now have, let's see here, negative 2. Well, 2 will divide by the 2 outside the integral, and that'll change this plus sign to a minus sign. The y's divide out, and then I'll have radical u, which I'll think about as u to the power of 1 half. So simplifying the, the result over here, I just get 2 pi squared. And then I wrote the radical u as u to the 1 half. The 2's divided out. The plus became minus because of the negative sign in the dx expression over here. But now let's look at this second integral. I notice that my lower bound is bigger than my upper bound. And I have this minus sign, which I know that negative signs or minus subtraction is more complicated than addition. So I'm going to take advantage of the properties of definite integrals. And I'm going to swap the bounds. So the upper bound becomes the lower bound. The lower bound becomes the upper bound. And that will result in that minus changing to a plus. So this will be, a, in my view, a simpler expression to evaluate. So let's go ahead and find the antiderivative. Let's do that carefully. Add 1 to 1 half. I get 3 halves. Reciprocal of 3 halves is 2 thirds. And then I have to evaluate that from 0 to 4. Well, the 0 is not uh, an issue. If I put in 4, well, remember, u to the 3 halves really means I'm going to take uh, the radical of u and then cube it. And so the radical of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 will be 16. And so I'll have the 2 pi squared from the first integral plus 16 pi over 3. All right. And um, 
So we have two methods now for finding uh, the volume, the method of washers or disks, and then the method of cylindrical shells. Usually you can choose one method or the other, which means that you now have a built-in way to check your answers. So I highly encourage you, particularly in a test situation, to find the volume using both methods so you have a check for your answer.